Hi everyone, it's Lori from Equestrian Urban Farm. Um, today, what the video is going to be is, I had, last week in the video I'd mentioned that I had made, I had preserved horseradish, and unfortunately I wasn't able to film that for you. My videographer wasn't available. So I kind of wanted to take it, take you through it this week um, to show you what the process was because it's turned out really nice. So I really enjoy horseradish, don't eat a lot of it, but uh, when you know when you want something like that in the house in the fall if you want it on top of a, of a sandwich or you know cold meat or if you're having that roast beef dinner um, I've always been really tempted and thought this year I'm going to um, do my own and they've got it growing down at the farm so I kind of hunted the internet because a lot of the recipes were that it would be in, good in the fridge for um, one to two weeks or, you know, use it up within, you know, three to four days. And I, I really wanted something longer than that. So the recipe that I found um, was it's good in the fridge for up to six months. So again, fingers crossed, when in doubt, throw it out. But that's what the recipe says. So I got three of these little jars done. So the recipe is really, really straightforward. You're going to need two cups of finely grated horseradish and one cup of your apple cider vinegar. And on the recipe, it does says, it does say, sorry, with the mother. And they really it did emphasize that they really wanted you to use um, the really high quality apple cider vinegar and half a teaspoon of salt. So when you either purchase or you, you know, purchase your, um, horseradish from the farm it's a really gnarly looking root it's white and it's yes this is a carrot <laughs> this is all I have but again at least I can help you take it through so when you get the horseradish home just give it a good scrub because it's, it does have its skin on it and then you need to peel it and I kept peeling and peeling until um, you could see white and believe me you can really start to tell when you got down because you're going to smell horseradish um, the other thing you want to have handy is a paring knife because the horseradish is such a different shape. Sometimes on it, I can just show you here, you had to cut out something, okay? Because sometimes it's got like, it's curved, it's got a bend to it. And in the recipe, it says it wants you to get at any of the black spots. So instead of keep peeling that, I would just take my paring knife and cut that away. So I just kept peeling and peeling until all of that outer horseradish skin was off and I was down to um, a creamy white look. I know this is orange, but just visualize creamy white. And you can certainly tell when you've achieved that because you're gonna to start to smell the, the horseradish. Um, now, when you're at that point, you can use a really fine grater to grate it up, okay? It's a horseradish is a little bit harder than um, a carrot, more like a parsnip. So you do want to use something fine. Um, the, what the recipe did call for was trying to put it into a food processor. So again, that handy piece that I've always shown you, I use, I put it in here and these only have the one blade. So if you do have one of those at home, I was worried, I didn't want to break my blade, so I just took them down to small pieces, my horseradish. So I took them down to pieces like this to put in to my processor, and it did a great job. I just kept pushing pulse and pulse until I had it in the same resemblance that I would have it with my fine grater. I put it into a bowl, I mixed it with my one cup of my um, vinegar, and then I added the salt. Now then it says to give it a good mix and this fits into either one 500 ml jar or into two, uh, two one cup jars. I just have these handy. Um, when you're fermenting any food, you wanna have everything really, really, really clean because this, isn't, this wasn't bathed, um, wasn't cooked and you're actually, we left this on the counter. The recipe called for two to five days 
And quite honestly, I had never done anything like this. So I was like, okay, I have um, helped Kelly at the farm because she's a, a fermenting expert, but you didn't put uh, like a little disc or anything on this. So I had pressed it all down. And then at the end of probably the first five hours, you could see the action starting to happen. You could see the bubbles. And Kelly always says that it's better to um, take the bubbles off like as they rise the top with something plastic. So I just used H's cute little spoon here and just kind of kept skimming the scum off the top. And so when you leave them on the counter, you don't put the seal on it. They just stay on the counter like that because you don't want the lids to blow. So at the end, it was going into my third morning. Um, the action had subsided. I had gotten kept skimming off the, the bubbles and I was left with this horseradish. And again, wish we had smell a vision because it looks like horseradish and it smells like horseradish. So when it was all done, I just made sure that my rim was all nice and clean, put my top back on and then I put my sealer band on it and into the fridge they went and I labeled them um, homemade horseradish. July 20th and used by January 2021 if they last that long because they really really do smell good. The other tip I wanted to share with you is it be really mindful um, because as you're grating the more you grate uh, the aroma because it does warn you that it can be quite it's not like an onion aroma but it can be quite powering so you might uh, want to take a, a little break. That's why this came in really handy because it kind of saved um, your, you from the fumes. You could just put it in and then I dumped and then I put the rest of the chopped in and just kept doing it until I had my, my two cups. So I know, like I said, they've got it growing down at McQuestin. So if you uh, love horseradish like we do so much in this family, you might want to give it a try. So again, that's two cups of um, prepared grated horseradish one cup of your apple cider vinegar and this says right on the bottle with the mother and then half a teaspoon of salt and that was it that's all just the three ingredients and uh let me know if you give that a try anyway thanks for tuning in and everyone take care thanks bye-bye